Good afternoon. Today, class, we're going to discuss Chapter 9, uh, some key points. I'm going to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of partnerships over other forms of business formations. I'm also going to describe partnership agreements and accounting for partnerships. So learning objective 9-1, explain the advantages and disadvantages of partnerships versus the corporate form of business. And so partnership advantages. The popularity of partnerships derives from several advantages inherent to this type of organization. Uh, for formation, only an oral agreement is necessary to create a legally binding partnership. Depending on specific state laws, incorporation requires filing a formal application and completing various other forms of documents. And operators of a small business may find convenience and, and reduce cost involved in creating a partnership to be an especially appealing or attractive uh, characteristic. So the major advantage of a partnership is the ease of formation. So treatment of partnership income. So partnership revenue and expense items uh, must be assigned directly each year to individual partners who pay the income taxes. Passing income, ba income balances through to partners avoids double taxation of profits earned and distributed to owners. A corporation's income is taxed twice, once when it's earned and again when conveyed as a dividend. And so partnership income is taxed only at the time the business initially earns it. So a partnership has inherent uh, tax advantages over a corporation. So treatment of partnership income, this is an, as an example. So let's assume that the business earns $100. So after paying any income tax, the remainder is immediately conveyed to its owners. And so an income tax rate of 30% is assumed for the corporations. Income is then distributed to the owners, uh, to each owner. The income tax rate of 30% is assumed for the partnership and 15% for corporate dividends paid to the owners. However, corporate dividends can be taxed at 0%, 15%, or 20%, depending on their overall earning level. And overall, the table shows a greater amount of expendable income for the partnership. So treatment of partnership operating losses. So income is taxable to partners as the business earns it. Operating losses reduce their, their personal taxable income directly if they materially participate in the business. A corporation is viewed as legally separate from its owners, so losses cannot be passed through to them. The corporation has the ability to carry back net operating losses and reduce previously taxed income and carry forward remaining losses to decrease future taxable income. So for a new corporation or an unprofitable profitable one, operating losses provide no immediate benefit. So basically partnerships can use operating losses to their personal advantage by reducing personal tax, taxable income. So partnership disadvantages. The partnership form of business has significant disadvantages. Unlimited liability that each partner automatically incurs. Any partner can be held personally liable for all debts. Potential risk is significant when coupled with the mutual agency. The right each partner has to incur liabilities is the name of the partnership. The name of the partnership. Partners acting within the normal scope of the business have the power to obligate the company for any amount. If the partnership fails to pay the debt, creditors can seek satis satisfactory remuneration from any partner they choose. So a major disadvantage is unlimited personal liability. No limits, all assets can be taken. So the Uniform Partnership Act, UPA, um, to provide a consistent application across state lines in regards to many legal aspects of a partnership, the Uniform Partnership Act was created. The first First proposed in 1914, the Act has been adopted by all states in some form. It established uniform standards in such areas as the nature of partnerships, the relationship of the partners to outside parties, and the dissolution of the partnerships. The definition of a partnership is an association of two or more persons to carry on a business as co-owners for profit. And so this Act helps to bring consistency to the treatment of partnerships across the United States. Alternative legal forms. So due to the, poss the possible owner liability, partnerships experience difficulty in attracting large amounts of capital. So potential partners frequently provide prefer to avoid the risk that is the basic characteristics of a partnership. 
The tax benefits of avoiding double taxation is also a strong pull. So a number of alternative types of organizations have been developed depending on the state laws as well as applicable tax laws. So the purpose is to limit the owner's personal liability while providing the tax benefit of a partnership. So due to the disadvantages of partnerships like unlimited liability, a number of alternative legal business formations have been developed. So alternative legal forms, one such form is a subchapter S corporation. So it has all legal characteristics of a corporation. It's taxed virtually the same way as a partnership. So you don't have dual taxation. The ownership limited to 100 stockholders. Owners limited to individuals, estates, and certain tax exempt entities and trusts. So the growth potential limited due to restriction on number of types of owners. That's one of the disadvantages of the S corporation. So an alternative, another alternative form is a limited partnership, an LP. So the tax benefits are the same as a partnership. Partners do not want to work in partnerships or have unlimited liability. So a number of limited partners invest money as owners but are not allowed to participate in the company's management. Partners are incurring loss on their investment, but it is restricted to what has been contributed. To protect creditors, one or more general partners must be designated to assume responsibility for all obligations created in the name of the business. So an LLP, a lim uh, limited partnership, has more characteristics as a general partnership, but it significantly reduces the partner's liability. Partners may lose investment in the business, responsible for contractual debts of the business. The advantage is in connection with a liability resulting from damages. Partners are responsible for only their acts or omissions and those of individuals under their supervision. And the LLC, Limited Liability Corporation, relatively new type of organization in the United States, long used in Europe and other areas of, of the world, classified as a partnership for tax and court purposes, Depending on the state, owners risk only their own investment, similar to a subchapter S, S corporation. A LLC provides liability protection for its owners and managers. In contracts to a subchapter S corporation, the number of owners is not usually restricted so that the growth may be easier to accomplish. So this is a very popular form of uh, business formation, the LLC. So partnership capital accounts. Partnership accounting provides limited amount of equity disclosure in individual capital accounts accumulated for every partner or every class of partners. Balances measure each partner's or group's interest in the book value of the net assets of the business. Does not differentiate between sources of ownership capital. Equity section of the balance sheet composed solely of capital accounts affected by the contributions from and distribution to partners, earnings, and equity transitions. So basically accounting, the significant part of accounting that deals with partnership revolves around capital accounts. Learning objective 9-2, describe the purpose of the articles of partnership and the list specific items that should be included in this agreement. So the articles of partnership, the Uniform Partnership Act established The Uniform Partnership Act establishes standards and rules for partnerships. The Uniform Partnership Act establishes standards and rules for partnerships, but a written agreement will supersede the UPA standards. The articles of partnership should always be clearly described. The following are included, the name and address of each partner, business location, description of the nature of business, rights and responsibilities of each partner, initial contribution to be made by each partner, and the method to be used for valuation. Partnerships can exist in the absence of a written partnership agreement, and agreements can also have a number of provisions. So articles of partnership should always clearly describe the specific method by which profits and losses are to be allocated, periodic withdrawal of an asset by each partner, procedure for admitting new partnerships, new partners, method for arbitrary partnership disputes, 
life insurance provisions, enabling remaining partners to acquire the interest of any deceased partner, and a method for settling a partner's share in the business upon withdrawals, retirement, or death. Learning Objective 9-3, so prepare the journal entry to record the initial capital investment made by a partner. So here we, here we are with an example. <clears throat> I'm going to assume that Carter and Green form a business to be operated as a partnership. Carter contributes 50000 in cash and Green invests 20000 The initial journal entry to record the creation of the partnership is as follows. There's going to be a debit to cash for 70000 Carter's and Green's capital accounts are going to be credited for 50000 and 20000 each to recognize the 70000 um, to record cash contribution to start a new partnership is the journal entries description. So accounting for capital contributions. So assume that Carter invests 50000 in cash to begin the previously discussed partnership and Green contributes these assets. So inventory, land, and building instead of cash. And so here you have a small schedule showing uh, the book value for Green and then the fair value of each one of these assets. And so after the contribution, Green holds no more right to the assets than Carter does. They now belong to the partnership. So Green's net investment is 67000 in the partnership. Accounting for capital contributions uh, with assumed liability. So Green's building is encumbered by a $23,600 mortgage that the partnership has agreed to assume. So Green's net investment now is equal to the 40, $43,400, which is $67,000 less than $23,600. The following journal entry records the formation of the partnership created by these contributions. So now you have the journal entry in this special situation where cash was contributed for $50,000. Inventory of ten thousand, land of eleven, and a building forty six thousand. You had a mortgage on the building for twenty three thousand six hundred, and then you're going to credit Green and Carter's capital accounts for fifty thousand and the forty three thousand four hundred respectively. And your description is going to be to record properties contributed to start partnership assets and liabilities are recorded at fair value. So determining the appropriate valuation for capital balances. Over the life of a partnership, these figures uh, serve in a number of important capacities. So the totals in the individual capital accounts influence the assignment of profits and losses to partners. Capital account balance is usually one factor in determining final distribution to be received by a partner at the withdrawal retirement. And ending capital balances indicate allocation to be made of assets that remain following the liquidation of a partnership. So these are important facts about um, capital balances. So learning objective 9-4, where you're going to use uh, both the bonus method and the goodwill method to record a, partner, a partner's capital investment. So accounting for capital contributions when you're dealing with intangible assets. Contributed intangible assets require special consideration. Contributions made by one or more of the partners may go beyond assets and liabilities, for example, a particular line of expertise or established clientele. There are two options for recording cont contributed intangible assets, which are the bonus method and the goodwill method. Each of these approaches achieves the desired result of establishing equal capital account balances. So an example, James enjoys open advertising agency and organized as a partnership. James contributes a cash of 70000 and Joyce invests only 10000 Joyce, however, is an accomplished graphic artist and a skill that is considered especially valuable to the business. James and Joyce have a, contributed a total of 80000 in identifiable assets to the partnership and have decided on the equal capital balances. And so often um, these type of decisions are not made this easy. They come after long and heated discussions because you're trying to come to an equitable, equitable arrangement when it comes to intangible assets. So the intangible contributions, when you use the bonus method, uh, these are the journal entries. The bonus method splits the 80,000 capital evenly between the two partners. It recognizes only assets physically transferred to the business, such as the cash such as cash, uh, patents, and inventory, but in this case, just cash. Joyce receives a capital bonus of 30000 from James in recognition of her artistic abilities, um, the 40000 recorded capital balance in excess of the 10000 that she contributed. And so here you have a debit to cash for the, for the $80,000. Then you have a credit to James's capital account and a credit to Joyce's capital account for 40000 each. 
So the total capital investment is $80,000. And your description is to record cash contributions with a bonus to Joyce because of artistic abilities. So the goodwill method example. So the goodwill method is based on the assumption that an implied value can be calculated mathematically and recorded for an intangible contribution made by a partner. In the present illustration, Joyce only invested 10,000 cash, 60,000 less than James, but receives an equal amount of capital according to the partnership agreement. So the journal entries for goodwill are as follows. Joyce's artistic talent has an apparent value of 60000 a figure that should be included as part of this partner's uh, capital investment. So Joyce's primary contribution to the business is ignored completely within the accounting records. She, the 10000 is going to be combined with her um, intangible asset of, of 70000 that's going to be attributed to her. And so now you have cash of 80000 and goodwill of 60000 which is going to result in both um, partners, James and Joyce, having a $70,000 capital account. An inscription is to record cash contributions with goodwill attributed to Joyce in recognition of the artistic abilities. And so now your total capital investment is $140,000 because of the $60,000 goodwill. Additional capital contributions. Owners made subsequent contributions of additional capital amounts during the life of the business. The investments can be to stimulate expansion or to assist the business in overcoming working capital shortages or other problems. Regardless, the contribution is to gain recorded is again recorded as an increment in a partner's capital account based on fair value. If a partner invests invest additional cash in a partnership, the partner's capital account balance is increased by the amount to reflect the transfer to the partnership. So capital withdrawals, articles of partnerships allow withdrawals as a reward for ownerships or as a compensation for work performed. Distributions are recorded initially in a separate drawing account that is closed into the individual's partner's capital account at the end of the year. So assume for illustration purposes that James and Joyce take out $1,200 and $1,500 respectively from their business. The journal entry to record this payment is as follows. So you're going to debit James's drawing account for twelve thousand and Joyce is drawing account for fifteen thousand and you're gonna credit cash because they actually withdrew cash for the two thousand seven hundred. Learning objective nine dash five demonstrate the impact that an allocation of partnership income has on partners' individual capital balances. So here we have allocation of income. So partnership revenues and expenses must be closed out at the end of the, each fiscal period and the net income allocated to each partner's capital account. A method must be devised for assignment of income. Articles of partnership should stipulate an established procedure. If no arrangement is specified, st state partnership laws dictate that all partners receive an equal allocation of income and losses, income or losses. So as an example, assume Tinker, Evers, and Chance form a partnership by investing cash of $120,000, $90,000, and $75,000 respectively. Evers will be allotted 40% of all profits and losses because of the previous business experience. Tinker and Chance divide the remaining 60% equally. The agreement also stipulates that each partner is allowed to withdraw $10,000 in cash annually from the business. Net income for the period is $60,000. So here, as an example with the, for our journal entries, at the end of the year, the partnership reports $60,000 in net income to reflect these changes Two journal entries are recorded. So you have a debit to Tinker, Evans, and, Ch and Chance's capital accounts for $10,000 for the drawing. And you're going to credit the drawing um, for $10,000 for Tinker, Evans, and Chance's drawing account. And this is to close out the drawing account recording payments made to the three partners. Then for income summary, you're going to debit $60,000 and you're going to credit uh, Tinker for 30%, Evans for 40%, and Chance for 30%, which results in an $18,000 credit, a $24,000 credit, and an $18,000 credit to allocate net income based on the provisions of the partnership agreement. So basically, at the end of the fiscal year, two closing entries are required. You need to close the drawing account, and then you need to allocate the net income to the partners. So statement of partners capital. A partnership does not prepare a statement of retained earnings for partners. Instead, a statement of, a statement, a statement of partners' capital is prepared. 
Changes made during the year in partners' capital accounts are outlined with totals representing the partnership. So here you have Tinker, Evans, and Change, the statement of partners' capital for year ending December 31st, year one. And so you have their capital balance beginning of the year, allocation of net income, their drawings, and then a capital balance at the end of the year. And so for each one, uh, Tinker's capital account is, ends up at the end of the year is 128000 Evers is 104,000, Chance is 83,000, and the total capital ending balance for the year is 315,000. Learning objective 9-6, allocate income to partners when interest and or salary factors are included. Assume original factors for Tinker, Evers, and Chance partnership except an Articles of Partnership Agreement credits each partner annually for interest equal to 10% of the partner's beginning capital balance for the year. Evers and Chance will also be allotted $15,000 each as compensation allowance in recognition of their partnership in daily operations. Any remaining profit will be split 3-4-3, with the largest share going to Evers because of the work experience that this partnership brings to the that his experience brings to the business. So here you have interest payments and a uh, salary compensation allowance. This alternative technique one. And so the 60000 net income earned by the partnership in the first year of operations would be allocated as follows. And here with the statement, you have allocation of partnership net income for Tinkers, Evans, Evers, and Chance. You have net income of 60000 Interest, 10% of the beginning capital balance, results in 12000 9000 and 7500 for each individual. Um, net income remaining after the interest is 31000 there's a compensation allowance for 15000 for Evers and 15000 for Chance. And then the remaining 30000 is divided up based on the 30, 40, 30. So you have a net income allocation totals of 12450 24600 and 22950 So the closing entries. So once you prepare the schedule, the previous schedule, computing div divisions of income must be completed prior to determining the final capital balances for the partners. For the Tinker, Evers, and Chance partnership, the allocation just, just calculated lead to the following year-end closing entries. And so you have a debit income summary for $16,000, a credit to Tinker Capital for $12,450, a credit to Evers Capital for $24,600, and a credit to Chance Capital for $22,950 to allocate the income for the year to individual partnerships capital accounts based on a partnership agreement and based on this schedule that you prepared to, to show the allocation of income. So alternative techniques, assignment process. So an assignment process is merely a series of mechanical steps reflecting change in each partner's capital balance resulting from provisions of the partnership agreement. The number of different allocation procedures that could be employed is limited solely by the partner's imagination. Although interest, compensation allowance, and various ratios are predominant factors encountered in practice, numerous other possibilities exist. Another approach to the allocation process further illustrates some of the variations that can be utilized. So this is basically discussing the schedule and how we're assigning the allocation of income. So alternative technique two. Example, assume Weber Rice formed a partnership several years ago to operate a coffee shop. Weber contributed the initial capital and Rice manages the business with the assistance of their accountant. They wrote an article of a partnership agreement that contains the following provisions. Each partner is allowed to draw $1,000 in cash from the business every month. Any withdrawal in excess of that figure will be accounted for as a direct reduction to the partner's capital account. Partnership profits and losses will be allocated each year according to the following plan. Each partner will earn 15% interest based on a monthly average capital balance for the year. As a result for operating the business, Rice receives credit for a bonus equal to 20% of the year's net income. No bonus is earned if partnership reports a net loss. The two partners will divide any remaining profit or loss equally. So the allocation of partnership income schedule. So stipulations drawn by partners must be followed exactly, even though $30,000 $30, pro $30, profit for the current year is insufficient to cover both interest and bonus. So based on the plan, Weber's capital increases by 21675 
during the current year, but Rice's account increases by 8325 And so here, you have, again, you have the allocation of partnership income, the $30,000 net income, your interest allocation, your net income remaining after the interest. You have to um, assign the bonus to Rice. And then the net income after interest and bonus, uh, the remaining income is distrib distributed 50% each. And then your net income allocation totals. That concludes chapter nine uh, key points. Please read the chapter and uh, go back over the PowerPoint once you've read it again. Thank you.